Hello, everybody, and welcome to the Down the Tee Tennis Podcast. We're back again to preview the Wimbledon men's and singles, men's and women's singles draw, and we're going to be making our predictions. Um, I'm delighted to be joined, as always, by Kieran Archer. Kieran, it's been two years since we've had Wimbledon. How are you, and how much are you looking forward to having the biggest tournament back? Yeah, definitely. I mean, I, I, I suppose it's very generic to say that Wimbledon is my favourite tournament, but it's just, how, how can anything else be a favourite tournament? The history behind Wimbledon, those beautiful green grass courts that we only get to see, uh, you know, in, in such a small part of the season, um, only for a couple of weeks. So, you know, I, everything about Wimbledon, I just, I, I, I love it. And I think, it still remains the most popular tournament with the players, with the fans. So, yeah, I'm definitely looking forward to it. Yeah, definitely echo that. So, um, just in, in the build-up to Wimbledon, before we get into talking about the tournament, we'll go through the recent uh, Grass Cup tournaments, which we've had ahead of the event. And we'll start with, on the ATP side. First of all, you had the ATP 250 in Stuttgart, which actually took place during the second week of the French Open. You had uh, Marin Cilic beating Felix auger Yassim. In the final, I think we mentioned that after the, the French Open, but just kind of to recap on the grass court season. And then after that, last week, we had a couple of the, the big pre Wimbledon grass events. First of all, in Halle, you had Hugo Humbert winning the title, being Andrew Rublev in the final. In Queens, Matteo Berrettini beating Cam Nori in the final. And then this week on the ATP side, we've had two 250 events. And today, the finals were both played. Daniel Medvedev winning his first grass court title, being Sam Quarry in the final. And in Eastbourne, Alex Dimonor also winning his first title on the grass, being Lorenzo Sonego uh, in the final. And moving on to the WTA, we have the WTA 250 in Nottingham first, with Joe Connor won, being Zhang in the final. And also 250 in Birmingham, Ons Jabir winning her first WTA title, where she defeated Daria Kazakina, who's had a bit of a return of form. And then there's a WTA 500 in Berlin, a new event, which was won by Leah Muller Samsonova, a qualifier against Belinda Bencic in the final, a good grass cup player. And this week on the WTA side, a 250 in Bad Holmberg, another new event, Angelique Kerber taking the title today in the final against Siniakova and the WTA 500 in Eastbourne, quite a big event. Jan Ostapenko has defeated Annette Conover in the final. So Kieran, just uh, to recap on some of those grass cup tournaments we have, we've had, what, what are your thoughts overall? I'd say on the men's side, there's been nothing really that's changed many of my thoughts going into the tournament sort of I was looking to draw on these grass court season results to inform my predictions and on the men's side we've seen Chilich looking strong well Chilich has always been a strong performer on the grass Felix making making a final and a semi-final and it's uh you go back to 2019 Felix looks really strong at Queens and that's when he uh, I, I, f I think that's when I remember first seeing Felix, although he did make a, a final before that. I think that's when I sat up and started taking notice of him. Hugo Humbert, um, quite a surprise winner, but at the same time, he has shown pro promising results mm. on the grass before. And then uh, Matteo Berrettini. I, I've always felt he had the game for grass and to win grass court titles. And uh, although, you know, it, it hadn't happened in the past, I don't think I'm not so surprised to see it now. So there's been... Nothing too much to change my thinking going into the tournament. Um, a lot of players I expected to be in and around there get, getting good results. On the women's side, um, I think, as, as the WTA tends to be, there's been uh, quite a lot that changed my thinking, if anything. Um, looking at um, Sansonova, uh, a, a qualifier, I believe, in the German Open, going on to win a WTA 500. That certainly surprised me. On Jabot, uh, winning Birmingham surprised me. And uh, I mean, Angelique Kerber, she's taken strong results on the grass at Wimbledon in the past, so not so surprising. A winner there, but um, maybe someone that wasn't at the, the forefront of my thinking coming into the predictions. It's, uh, but, but, you know, it has reminded me that she's a very good grass court player. So I, I think definitely a lot to think about on the women's side. Absolutely. Agreed. Yeah, definitely on Kerber. It's been an interesting one who, I'm sure, will come on to you. It hasn't had a good year, but that just really. Um raises another interesting discussion point with with her finding some form on the grass so it's moving on to a few of the you know the the big news i guess ahead of wimbledon in terms of the withdrawals of a few big name players rafael nadal withdrawing um from wimbledon and the olympics um looking to prepare the looking to return to the tour for the u.s hardcore season ahead of the u.s open he's i think he said he's planning to play 
Toronto and Cincinnati ahead of the US. So um, an interesting decision now. Dominic Team withdrawn, unfortunately, with a wrist injury that he picked up in Mallorca in, in his first match against Adrian Manorino. It doesn't look like a good injury. He's also pulled out of events in Hamburg and I believe uh, Bastard afterwards. Um, Justard, rather, in, in Switzerland. So uh, I think he's going to have to he has to wear a, a brace on his, on his wrist for five weeks. The team is going to be out of action for a while. And then on the women's side, defending champion Simona Halep, who obviously won the title in 2019, out with the calf injury that also kept her out of the French Open, which is a real shame. And Naomi Osaka has also decided to withdraw, following on from uh, withdrawal from the French Open, but is planning to return for the Olympics in Tokyo. So, Kieran, what were your thoughts on those withdrawals, the impact they might have on the tournament, and mainly on Nadal's decision, which is the big talking point? Yeah, I mean, Nadal, I'm I'm quite gutted with this decision, um, although I feel like maybe maybe fitness was a, a, well, not fitness, but maybe a bit of an injury seems to be possibly niggling him in that um, Djokovic match at Roland Garros. Um, I didn't think he looked particularly bad with, with injury throughout the tournament. Um, and he just said that he, he, he needs to give his body more time to recover I think after after tournaments and and really sort of prioritize events and that that is a shame because I feel like Nadal still has a lot to offer at Wimbledon and I really hope to see him back at Wimbledon next year um you know he's reached semi-finals recently played really competitive semi-finals with uh Djokovic and Federer in in a couple of the last few years um, he, he did have a little bit of a lull at Wimbledon um, for a few years, but he's returned to get really strong results on the grass. And I do feel like he's got something to offer. He's not a favourite for, for the tournament, but he's definitely a, a decent outsider if, he, if, he, if he'd have played. For Dominic, it, it really sad for him. Um, you know, yeah, I think he, he's quite a bit of a, a patriot. He always seems to with how he talks about Austria. So it's a shame for him to, to be missing out on the Olympics. Um, I'm sure he'd have been massively motivated for that. And I do feel like um, Wimbledon would have seen him come of age a little bit um, and have his best run on, on the grass in, in a long time. Um, during the, the period of exhibition matches that we had last year, just as uh, sort of restrictions started to get lifted, but the main tour didn't return. Um, I think team took a, a title through a decent drawing in one of those exhibitions or on grass. So a few promising signs for him and, and it's a massive shame that, you know, he doesn't get to compete. He's such a strong competitor and it just shows how big of a problem that he's been facing this year. I think it's probably, probably been something that's affected him since the start of the year, but he was just trying to play through it. Um, and, you know, as, as for... Simona Halep, yet, yet again, just a massive shame for her. Um, a, a, a strong contender for the title at Wimbledon, uh, the defending champion, isn't she? Uh, who sadly doesn't get to defend her title. And and obviously we had, we had uh, the news that Naomi was going to continue to take time out and target the Olympics. And, you, you know, you've got to say the tour is, is much much weaker without the names Simona Halep and Naomi Osaka. So uh, it's, 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 it puts a bit of a a bad note on it, but not too much of a sour note. Like we, We've still got most of the best players in the world uh, on both men's and women's side competing for the oldest title in tennis to come up in the next couple of weeks. So I, I'm sure we'll be able to put that bit of disappointment to the back of his minds as soon as possible. Yeah, yeah, I would agree. I mean, of course, the big names and uh, great players like there's always going to be a big miss, but it looks like we've still got um, a couple of fantastic draws to talk about and dissect. So um, let's let's move into it. Stein on the men's side with uh, the first quarterfinals, uh, Novak Djokovic's section, if you like. Um, just talk us through your thoughts on, on that section, Kieran. Who are your two quarterfinalists that you've picked there? So my quarterfinalist from, from the top half of the draw, I've gone with Djokovic Rublev. Um, I'll, I'll talk you through it a little bit. Um, I think Djokovic is a bit of a no-brainer. I mean, Kevin Anderson is an awkward second round at Wimbledon. Um, you know, and Kevin's got a, a very big serve. He's, he's been strong at Wimbledon in the past, but Djokovic tends to get results uh, against those kind of awkward players. Um, 
you know he's got the tools to deal with uh, a big a big serve on the grass court so um i don't think it's going to cause too much of a problem um and then i mean you, you're looking at the seeds on his uh his little section, you've got Christian Garan, who's a seeded player, but probably if the grass court results were, were factored in as he used to be, he might not even be, be seeded because um, it's never been his strong surface. Um, I mean, I, I could maybe see uh, Lu Yen Shun, uh, the, the veteran who's been strong at Wimbledon in the past, being, being Djokovic's fourth round opponent and Whoever it is, I think Djokovic comes through that fourth round into the quarterfinal. And then on, on Rublev's side on his section coming into that quarterfinal, I, I think this one's a little bit harder. You've obviously, you've got Diego Schwartzman in there. His uh, grass isn't his best surface, but it's also not an awful surface for him. He's, he's uh, gone a good few rounds into Wimbledon in the past. I think maybe fourth round is best results. Um, you, you might have to Facts check me on that one. Um, I mean, Yannick Sinner is an unproven quantity on those uh, grass courts. I, I think he's got the tools for it. He's shown promising results on quite fast hard courts this year. I, I mean, I think his game will translate to grass, but what I'm thinking is, although he's got the game to translate to grass, he hasn't had enough practice, enough hours on it yet. And, you know, he's, he's grew up most of his life playing on clay and hard courts. And it may take a bit of time, a couple of years on tour for him to, to you know, fully be able to put those tools to good work on the grass. I think one of the biggest factors in this section is actually uh, Giri Vesely. Um, very strong at Wimbledon in the past. He's got the attributes to succeed on grass courts, be an awkward opponent for people. And I could actually see that being Rublev's fourth round. I could see it being a really awkward uh, fourth round for him. I think Lloyd Harris as well... Um, you know, he, he hasn't performed too well at Wimbledon in the past, but I do think he has got the tools to perform at Wimbledon. He's also got a very good serve. He can play with a bit of power uh, and he's relatively fit. He can put himself around the court. But I, I do see Rublev Vesely possibly being the fourth round and I do think Rublev probably has the tools to get through that and into that quarterfinal with Djokovic. Yeah, yeah, I think it's that's interesting, and yeah, I've I've, I've gone with the same the same pair as you in, in Djokovic and Rublev as the two quarter finalists, and I would, I would agree with a lot that you've, you've gone through that. I think I think it's a, a pretty good draw, I'd say, for both of those two um, the two highest seeds in in the section. I think, like yeah, like you mentioned, I don't really see any any threats for Djokovic there. I mean, Kevin Anderson maybe a few years ago you would have said, but I think at this stage of his career he's had a lot of trouble with injuries, hasn't had a, a good year. I, I could probably see Djokovic coming through this the section without. Without dropping a set, I mean, there's Dennis Kudla in there. He's, he's a good player on grass. He's had some, he's had some success at Wimbledon in the past. I think making the fourth round, but yeah, I mean, as, and as you mentioned, Garin and, and Gail Monfils. Garin not obviously not suited to the surface. Monfils has never done that well at Wimbledon either, but has generally not been in good form on any services pretty much since the start of last year when the tour was suspended. So David Vishvakina's in there, a junior Wimbledon champion. I'm, I'm not sure. Again, as you mentioned with Sinner, um, I don't think he's massively suited to to grass, and I think um, I, I don't actually think he's played a two level match on grass until Eastbourne last week, where he had to withdraw. So I, I really don't see much in Djokovic's way there. And then Rublev, yeah, I think Vesely was definitely an interesting uh, an interesting player to point out who, who could come through the fourth round. I'll would, I would probably say it would either be him or, or Sinner, and uh, but I would agree with what you've said, Sinner. Just the lack of experience and getting used to the movements probably going to be a factor. But he definitely has the aggressive game and the flat baseline strokes to succeed probably further down the line um lloyd harris yeah definitely could be dangerous with a big serve and a big game and obviously Fanini in there's always a threat but not so much on on this service so i think yeah Djokovic rublev it's hard to look past it so and moving on to the second quarter final in in the top half which two players have you gone with for that one yeah i've got, gone i think with the seeds here actually no not quite with the seeds but i've gone with uh Sitsi pass to come up against Roberto Bautista Agu. And uh, just looking through my, my notes on that, my thinking on that, I think Tier 4, an awkward first round. And he has a, um, he got to the final of, was it Nottingham, the challenger? Um, yeah, I think you won. Yeah. yeah, towards the start of the grass court season. So, um, you know, an awkward opponent, but I'd expect Sitsi pass to, to be able to get through that. Um, Pospisil, another quite awkward opponent, but once again, and catching all the possible third round opponent 
uh, I don't think it's an easy draw, but I do think, especially buoyed by that Roland Garros result, that coming in with confidence, I think Sixth Pass will be able to come through it. Uh, the bottom half of that that section, um, I, I think I can see that going with seeds, although Seb Cord has looked promising. Um, I can see both Diminor and Evans coming through that big section, that, that little half of the section, because um, Diminor, some really strong results uh, during the grass court season. He, he got deep into Queens before losing to Berrettini. He's, he's, uh, he's won the title at Eastbourne. Um, Dan Evans, he also managed to get quite far at Queens, uh, I think also losing to Berrettini. Uh, so, um, yeah, I can see that, that little section, part of the section going going with the seeds. And then Sitsi Pass um, to come up against maybe Dimonor round four. Um, just that, that extra title, well, that title to his name, I feel like probably... I'm edging towards Diminor right now, but I'd still say City Pass comes through that match with with Diminor. And then se- Section 4, um, a, a really strange one for me. I mean, you've got Chapo, he's, uh, he's had a few injury problems recently. Um, he's uh, got quite a tough first round opponent, actually, against uh, Cole Schreiber, who's been, has he been to the quarterfinal of Wimbledon in the past. Um He's definitely been quite far into the tournament in the past. Pierre Hughes Heber, he's showed some potential at Wimbledon in the past, getting through a few rounds. He's uh he's uh, shown some some uh, potential in singles. He's one of the best doubles players in the world, but I do genuinely think he's got the tools to succeed in singles if you focused on it a bit more. And then the, it's this little section that we get to see uh Sir Andy Murray, uh, you know, my my favourite ever tennis player. And and honestly, I feel like he's got a good chance against Basilashvili. Um, it's always difficult to call. I always refer to Basilashvili as a bit of an enigma because, you know, he takes good results in one place and then he'll follow that up with a round one exit. Um, I, I do think Murray, full of, uh, com- you know, well, it, it'll, be, it'll be training to peak at Wimbledon, won't he? Um, he came through Benoit Pair at Queen's. Obviously, that's difficult to really gauge because Benoit Pair, you don't know whether he's played to his full potential, whether he's full of motivation um, and that's that's a big factor with Benoit Pair. but I, you know it's still on paper it's a difficult match to come through he's done well to come through that and I feel like peaking at Wimbledon with a crowd on his side, he maybe makes round three, maybe even round four where uh, you know he, he possibly, actually no, I think he makes round three where he probably uh Loses to Roberto Batista Gu, I think. Oh no, no Shapovalov, yep. yeah. Um, and then Batista Gu, semi finalist, was it in 2019? It was semi final. Um, he's had mixed results this year, but some really good ones along the way. Um, I, I think he comes he comes through Shapo or Murray or whoever he faces in that fourth round to set up that quarter final with City Pass. Yeah. Yeah, I think I think this is a really interesting section, probably one of the most in the drone. Yeah, interesting. Um I do have a slight difference on this one. I've also gone with City Pass, but I've, I've gone with him to play Denis Shapovalov instead of Baltista. Um and yeah, I, I agree. I think they've both got slightly challenging paths. If you look through, I would, I would say Sitsa passes most likely would be Tiafo, which, which could be a tricky first one. And that's like Paul Spasil has been the Wimbledon quarters before, I think. Uh, I think, yeah, maybe Hashinov in the third round, but I mean, he's been badly out of form and grass probably is his worst service. So I think that one maybe wouldn't be too bad. And I agree. I think Evans or Dimonor in, in the fourth round are interesting. Evans got Fel- Feliciano Lopez in the first round, as you mentioned, Dimonor, uh, Seb Corda, they're both tough first round matches, but um, yeah, I think I would, I think I would pick both of those two to come through and probably again, Dimonor mm-hmm. through the fourth round where I think Sitsa Pass would be too good. And Shabovalov, yeah, it's, it's a challenging one. Cole Schreiber, a good player on all services and um, it's had a bit of a revival, a really great win at the French Open against Karatsev, which I don't think anyone really saw coming. So he, he could be a threat there. Um, I agree it would be her but probably in round two he's, he's a, a good aggressive player and I think Murray yeah Murray could have a good run like you mentioned I don't think it's too bad a draw for him I mean Basilashvili is a dangerous player obviously seeded but I think it could have been much worse for Murray and Basilashvili did have a good run in, in Halle at the semi-finals but 
generally grass hasn't been a great service from itself. So I think Murray could uh, could take him out in the first round and back it up by being one of the qualifiers. The second round, that well, yeah, I do think Shapovalov would probably would probably stop him in the third round, but it would, it would be a great match to see. I think still, just given Murray's lack of matches, it would be the recovery after playing best of five that would probably limit how far he could go this stage. But I think that would be a really positive run if he could if he could get to that match, and then. Yeah, Bautista Gu, or, or Apelka have gone in the fourth round for Shapovalov. I think Apelka could be a factor, could could be a handful for Bautista Gu early on there. But um, I'd probably have Bautista Gu to come through to Shapovalov and, and just have him to get a bit um, out hit um, by Shapovalov on, on the surface. I think he's a really good player on grass, Shapovalov, with a lot of potential on the quicker services. I mean, he had a good run at Queens to the semifinals, which I think was positive. So yeah, I think I think possibly you could see him coming through to play since it pass. So um, it's on to the next quarterfinal as we move into the, the bottom half. Uh, which two players have, have you gone for in that one? So um, I've got um, a Matteo Berrettini versus Hugo Humber quarterfinal uh, between section five and section six. Um, I think Berrettini's results on the grass court uh, this year speak for themselves. He's obviously he's, he's got a big serve. He hits a ball very hard. He, he, he can hit quite flat. Um, so I think he's got the game for grass and I think it's going to really show this year, especially coming in with confidence. He's got awkward ties in there with potentially John Isner. We all know John Isner is a factor at Wimbledon. And also a very strong year so far from John Isner. Um, you know, he, I think he's taken some really surprising results on the clay courts, which isn't usually his best surface. So he'll, he'll have confidence, but I think Berrettini's got more to upset Isner than Isner has to upset Berrettini. And then uh, in, in Berrettini's section, you've also got Aslan Karatsev, you've got Kane Ishikori. I could see that being a third round tie, actually, between those two. I think Kane's starting to look back to a good level. Not his best, but back to a good level. Um, and, you know, his his work rate, his, his fitness, I think he's always a problem in, in best of five sets. If he does manage to take you deep, he's usually got more left in the tank. Um, but I could see a... a, a, a Round four between Berrettini and Karatsev, and I think um, Karatsev has got potential on grass once again. I, I do think his game is quite suited to the surface, uh, and it might show, but I'd still say Berrettini is, is the favourite there. And then section six, I, I really like this section. Felix, you know, he's, he's arrived, he, he's been good on grass courts this year, he's been good on grass courts in the past. Another disappointing final defeat in the grass court season, um, but... I'm sure he'll be full of confidence and, and uh, he's he's got, uh, you know, attributes to succeed on this surface, as he's, he's showed. I think that coming up against Humber in the third round, I'd say Humber's your favourite there with uh, with that win in, uh, was it Haller or Stuttgart? Um, uh, Haller. Haller. With that win in Haller and, um, you know, he, he's once again... High on that first on on uh, that first grass court title, um, and had decent results at Wimbledon in the past. I feel like Humber's a favourite to win that match. He's got a poten potential banana skin first round against Kyrgios as Humber. Yeah. You know, we remember that Australia Open tie, the two players that seem to grind each other's gears a bit. But um, I don't think we'll have a repeat of Australia. Obviously, Nick in Australia is a very different factor to Nick at Wimbledon and uh, then you're looking at possibly a round four against Zverev, um, Humbe beats Zverev at, at, at Halle and um, I think he might beat Zverev again, we, we know uh, Zverev beats, he's got a very big serve uh, that can help him on grass, but then he's also got that second serve that sometimes fails him. And and if he's if he's not hitting his first serves, I, I really am not confident in Zverev coming through players like Humber. So so I, I I've actually gone with Humber to set up that quarterfinal. Yeah, yeah, that's a really interesting call, and I think it's another fascinating uh, little core of the draw. I was I was also I was tempted to go for Humber, but in, in the end that that just went for. Matteo Berrettini against Alexander Zverev for the two court finalists. But um, yeah, there's, there's a lot of threats in this section. As you said, for, for whichever players you could look coming through, they're going to they're gonna have some tests you'd expect. But yeah, I just think with Berrettini's 
draw it's, it's not too bad i mean looking at guido pella early on but yeah that it's that round three tie you'd expect against john isner which could be a real one to watch out for and just because by the nature of two such dominant servers and aggressive players you're gonna you'd be surprised if you see a break of serve in that match so i mean by the nature of it there's going to be tie breaks and I would, yeah i'd back Berrettini just about come through but it, it could be a tight one and then possibly Bedene, Corentin Mute and uh, uh, yeah, Kasper Ruud, so the other high seed, but obviously um, not. you wouldn't expect them to be a big factor on grass. He got, got a couple of wins in Mallorca last week, but it, it, against probably a low level of opposition and not in best of five. So I think, yeah, like I said, Kratzev, I think could be a danger, but probably just needs a little bit more experience on, on the grass side. I could actually maybe see Nishikori having a chance to come through the fourth round there. I mean, he's got a, a tricky opener against Alexi Popper and he's got a uh, big game, a lot of weapons, but I think Nishikori, I mean, he's made the, the quarterfinals the last two times he's played Wimbledon. So I could see him possibly getting to the round of 16, but I think Berrettini with the form he's in and everything he can bring on any surface, but particularly grass, I think, uh, would come through. And then Zverev's path, I mean, I don't think it's too bad until it would get to the fourth round. Looking at Greek Spore, Tennis Sandgren, Taylor Fritz or Steve Johnson, some good players um, who could probably do well in the service, but I think Zverev would be would be too good. And he hasn't really had those real early round slam troubles that he, he did have a few years back. So I think coming to, through the fourth round, that's where you, you'd see him play someone out of that really interesting little section with uh, Humbert, Alger Aliasim or Kyrgios. I think that Alger Aliasim, Kyrgios first round tie is, is a must, must watch one, definitely. I mean, um, but yeah, Kyrgios obviously hasn't played a match since the Australian Open. So I think Humbert would, would just come through there. And I agree with what you said about Azure I think he's I think he's in a good place and clearly a really a really good player on grass. I think he's he's really got the tools, the the big serve, the aggressive game looks to dictate with the forehand. Might even be his best surface at this point. I think he's got a 14 and 5 career record. So I mean really impressive there. That that third round one between him and Humbert could be a really interesting one potentially, but I would, I would just go with Humbert who ed, edged him in the semifinals in in Halle as well. And I would, I would just have Zverev to survive survive Humbert. I mean, I think it would be a really tough one to call. Like Again, another player, Humbert, being Hala, as you mentioned, but I'd just go in best of five sets. Zverev, to be fair, has been consistent um, since the start of 2020 in, in the slams. He's had some really solid results without without winning one, obviously coming very close, but he's made some semifinals, quarterfinals. I think he's only won fourth round in there since the start of 2020, so it's a good body of work he's put together and really rectified the, the slam struggles um i think he can if he is proactive enough and really looks to be aggressive it, i think he, he could be tough to stop on grass even though i would probably say it's his toughest surface so i'll just have him meeting berrettini there but um then moving on to the bottom and the final men's quarter final not another interesting section for a few reasons um who have you gone with for that one kieran so I've gone with um, a Roger Federer. I've gone for it. I've gone for Roger Federer um, against Daniel Medvedev in, in the quarterfinal. Just uh, talking you through Federer, um, I think he probably makes that third round quite comfortably, uh, where hopefully he'll set up a tie with Cam Norrie. There's players like Lucas Puyum there, Richard Gasquet, very good players, but... Cam's took good results this year, and I hope for a strong Wimbledon third round against Roger Federer would be strong enough. That I'd have Federer coming through that third round into a fourth round with. Uh, I mean, you've got players in that that section of the draw. You've got Lorenzo Sonegos, obviously. Uh, just uh, lost a very competitive final with Alex Dimonor at Eastbourne. Um, you've got Pablo Carreño, Boosty. Grass has never been his best surface, but he's a very good player and. You know, he, he's, he's got a chance, but he's, he's also got a very difficult first round against Sam Quarry, who's uh, obviously Wimbledon, one of his better slams. Once again, he's got that big, big serve that uh, makes uh, makes him a big problem on grass courts, and, he, and he's gone far at Wimbledon in the past. I'd actually maybe have Sam Quarry coming through that, that bottom half of Section 7, um, beating maybe Lorenzo Senegal in the third round to set up that fourth round tie with Federer. And then I'd have Federer coming through that once again. Um, I think Federer, you, you've seen him win Wimbledon finals against the likes of, of Maran Cilic. He's, uh, you know, he can deal with those big serves on grass. He's got a pretty good serve himself, but also the all-around game. 
I'm also encouraged by Federer's results at, at Roland Garros, not traditionally his best slam. I'm not so encouraged by the fact Federer took an early exit um, at Halle against uh, Fe Felix, but, um, you know, like we say, Auger Ali seen his grass is probably his best surface and it's uh, it's not too surprising a result. Um, and then in that, that section eight, there's a, there's a lot of interesting players in there. Hubert Herkash, strong, strong showings at Wimbledon in the past. He's took a set off Djokovic here. Um, I mean, Maran Cilic, we've already mentioned him a fair bit, is is going to be a big problem for Medvedev if he's going to come through that section. But I do think Medvedev is coming of age. He's got his first grass court title. He's always had a game that I feel would uh, develop on grass. I think third round is his best real result at Wimbledon, which he's got twice. But I I, I do see him finally going a bit further than that. Um, I mean, Grigor Dimitrov in, in that section... You never really know what to expect with Grigor. His, uh, his form can be a bit up and down. If he turns up, then he can be a real problem for Medvedev, for her cash, for those players in this section. But I'm just about having Medvedev come through it, maybe maybe against Dimitrov or her cash in the fourth round to set up that quarterfinal with, with Roger Federer. Um, I mean, what a quarterfinal that would be. Yeah, it certainly would be, in, and I'm in agreement with you. That's that's what we're going to get. Um, I'd like to see it, and yeah, on, on Federer's part, I think it's a good draw for Federer. Like you said, not um, not ideal in Halle, but I think I think it's a draw where he can play his win there, and that play his way into the tournament. There, I really don't see him slipping up against those guys in the early round. You rarely see it at Wimbledon, um, maybe once ever since since he started winning the title. But yeah, I mean, Manorino and Gasquet, the two Frenchmen, good on grass, but I don't think. I don't think I've got enough to pull off the upset. And Norrie definitely deserves some mentions, having a fantastic year and had a fantastic result in Queens reaching the final, really pushing Berrettini. Could could be an interesting one in the third round. I think he'll probably get there, Norrie. But I would still I would still back Federer to come through it. And yeah, I probably agree with you. I think Query in most likely in the fourth round, um, just reached a runner up in uh, Mayorga, losing to Medvedev. It's, I think Wimbledon semi finalist. In the past, I think you'd probably come through there. Sonego definitely got a chance. Cronio Booster, I think, probably leads the quarry in, in the first round. So, yeah, I think Federer would handle that and you'd be pretty happy with that draw. I expect him to come through it. And Medvedev definitely has a tough one. I mean, with Jan Leonard Struff up first, who he lost to in, in Halle. Um, but I'll, I'll just have him just have him to come through Struff. Obviously, pulled up the big first round upset at the French uh, against Rublev. So, it's, there's the possibility he could repeat that. But I just think. I like Medvedev's chances on grass and, and coming in with the title and Mallorca is first on the grass. I think we've seen it uh, with Medvedev in the past, the two slam finals he's reached, he's coming with momentum off the back of winning tournaments or having loads of good runs to finals. As we saw the 2019 US Open, we saw the 2020 Australian Open, he's coming with winning streaks and he's been very difficult to stop. I think we, we could see something similar here. And yeah, I think his flat game and his, his big service is well suited to the service. We've already seen him. Uh, possibly adapt into it, and it's just a case of getting the movement. So, uh, again, Tommy Paul probably in the second round. I don't see a, a problem. Chilic is definitely the the one to look out for in the third round. I think there's been signs of, of Marin finding his confidence again. Obviously winning the title and still got a, a decent quarterfinal showing in, in Queens. But I, I still question whether mentally he fully has the belief back to really pull off a, a big win like that at a slam. I would, I would still side with Medvedev. And then, yeah, her cash, I think, has got a good game for grass. Um, is a possible full round opponent, but has, has really struggled since winning the title in Miami. I think he's only won one match, and part of that is I think with it being on the clay, I don't think he's don't think he's suited to clay court tennis. But um, yeah, I think it, he's he's lost his way a little bit since then. Bublik and Dimitrov, I think are the other two who could who could come through there. And um, I would actually pick Dimitrov if if I could get some kind of assurance that he's going to be healthy. That's 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 the question for me. So I, I like his game on on grass. I think he's been a bit unlucky at the last two slams with that back issue. He hasn't played a, a, a pre-tournament uh, warm-up on grass, so that suggests maybe he's still not 100%. But if, if I could get that, I would pick Dimitrov. Otherwise, I'll probably go with Bublik and I think I think Medvedev would just just win that. So, yeah, it'll be, it'll be interesting to see that quarterfinal, definitely. So, moving on to the outcome of the, the quarterfinals, um, who have you got to come through your, your first one? I'm looking at these that I've noted down earlier, and I mean now I'm looking at them, and, I, and I'm, I've, be, I've become a bit less sure 
on them, but um, I, I'm going to stick with it anyway. This is what I've selected. I've got um, Djokovic to get through that, that meeting with Rublev. Uh, that makes a lot of sense. Sitsi Pass to come through a match against Bautista Ragu. That makes a lot of sense. Berrettini Humber. I've, uh, I've I've gone with Berrettini. Uh, I think that'd be a close match. Um, it could also be Zverev as well in that quarterfinal. Once again, I could see that being a really close encounter. But um, I, I think I'd maybe just about fancy Berrettini against either of those two, just based on on the on 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 Queens basically. Um, and then Federer Medvedev. Looking at this, uh, I, I've looked at the head-to-head. Federer leads that free love, but you've got to think uh, Medvedev was a completely different player when when he last played Federer than he is today. He was a completely different player across all those three meetings as he is today. He's come on a lot, especially in the last couple of years. And but I've I've still. Even with Medvedev's improvement, I've still selected Federer to come through a close match there um, and make it into the semi-final against Matteo Berrettini. Yeah, well, it's, de- it's definitely an interesting one. Um, no, yeah, that was a, a tough one for me as well. So just to go through them, yeah, I've, I've got Djokovic to beat Rublev and, and what will be the first meeting. I think, again, Rublev would, would fall at the quarter-final hurdle, which he's done a few times. I think it would be a really interesting match to see since I haven't played, but I think it would probably be a tough matchup for him until he, until he gets the experience of playing it. So it's a, I'd have Sita Pass to beat Shapovalov. Um, Shapovalov actually leaves the head, leads the head-to-head 3-1, which, which is an interesting one, but a few of those, I think, did did come a couple of years ago. I think Sita Pass has made probably more strides since then than, than Dennis, but I think it could be it could be a tough matchup for him. I'll, I'll just go with Sita Pass. Uh, now I'd have Berrettini to beat Zverev. I think could be a tough one to call. Like you say, it could could easily be Humbert and now even Australia seem. But I think I think Zverev just to come through. He does lead the head head three one. But uh, I think th- two of those were on clay. I think on grass, I would just give give the edge to Berrettini. I mean, especially with the form he's been in, and I would just have Medvedev to beat Federer go, going against the head to head a bit. I mean, yeah, it is a tough one. I don't think that would be an easy match for Daniel. I think he does find it. Difficult against Federer, but uh, yeah, I'm going with all, all the the improvements he's made since then, and, and probably the version of Federer we'll see this tournament. I think could be a good one, especially if he gets to the quarterfinals, but maybe not quite as strong as as in 2019 and 2018 when those wins came. So I would just have Medvedev to win that. Um, so into the semi-final matchups, uh, who have you got coming through there? So the Djokovic six past semi-final. Um... That's obviously obviously a repeat of the fantastic Roland Garros final we had on a very different surface. Um, I've I've got Steph to put up a good fight, maybe take it to four or five sets, but I think Djokovic once again will will come through that match. Um, I, I think Djokovic um, is is got the extra proving ability at Wimbledon, having having won the tournament. Is he on five now? Um, Having won the tournament five times, um, I think Sitsi Pass will that defeat at Roland Garros play play on his mind a bit, or will it serve as an extra level of motivation? Um, I mean, I think it is. A, it's a really difficult match for Djokovic. I think he comes through a relatively easy draw into a really tricky quarterfinals and semi-finals, but you've still got to back Novak really to come through those matches. And then the other semi-final, Berrettini Federer. I'm saying off the back of a very close match between Federer and Medvedev, uh, Federer may be fading at this point in the tournament. I, I'd have maybe the relentless power of Berrettini to to come through that match and and set up set up a final with Djokovic, his first Grand Slam final. Yeah, no, that would definitely would definitely be interesting to see. Um, yeah, I'm, I'm with you on the first one. I've got Djokovic to be sit to pass thing again. Could be could be a tough one, but on grass, I think I would I'd. Sw- probably swing it more in, in Djokovic's favour than it was on clay where we've, we've seen some really close matches including the, the last two years at the French Open I mean the six the head-to-head's now 6-2 overall at Djokovic and I just think he is he is a level above the rest probably on grass I think that'll be a great run for Sitsa Pass because I think there's, there's still areas he can probably uh, improve on, uh, on on the grass in terms of his return and probably his, his backhand slice but yeah I think would just go with Djokovic there would be his biggest test so far though as you'd expect in the semis and I'll, I'll just have Medvedev to beat Berrettini uh, leads the head-to-head 2-0 um, 2-0 and I, I, yeah I just think that's quite a, a good matchup for Medvedev uh, obviously returns extremely well and I think with his his own serve being great Berrettini not being the best returner 
don't think you would um, be threatened too much on surface on a, on a surface like this. So I would I would just go with with Medvedev. But I mean, it would be a really tough match with a lot of tight sets, I think. So going in, in at the final, um, you've got Djokovic and Berrettini. Who's winning that? Well, uh, we've come up against each other twice. Obviously, we played in the quarterfinal of uh, this year's Roland Garros just a few weeks ago. Berrettini managed to take a set off Djokovic, but um, lost in four. And then the previous meeting was in the ATP finals um, uh, back in 2019. And Djokovic straight set swim there. So I'd probably just go with the head to head and say Djokovic to beat Berrettini. I'd say in four sets, I could see uh, Berrettini maybe winning a set, probably on a tie break in on the grass courts between those two, especially with Matteo Berrettini's serve and that plus one shot on, on, on that uh, big forehand. I can see that being awkward for Djokovic, but Djokovic has faced that kind of player plenty of times and, and beaten him. He's beaten Berrettini twice, so I'd say a Djokovic winning for. Yeah, and yeah, I think we've had a few, one or two different players in, in the quarters and the semis maybe, but I think we've ended up perhaps under surprising with the same outcome in the final. I've, I've also got Djokovic to win and I would, I would also probably go with, with four sets. Uh, I think, yeah, I mean, Medvedev is someone who has given Djokovic trouble um, probably the most out of, out of the young guys. I mean, the head-to-head's 5-3 five, five, three of Djokovic, but I mean, Medvedev has, has really troubled him at times. But on grass, I think he, he could do it as well. It could be tough to break, but I still think Djokovic is a level above the rest on on the surface. The way he moves, the way he's able to defend and return on on a quick call, and, and obviously it helps his own mm-hmm. offensive game as well. I just I just think, I mean, there's even the, the possibility. I think with with how motivated he is, it, it, it's mm-hmm. a question of how many sets does he drop in in the tournament, probably rather than th- does he lose. I mean, maybe that's that's and that's not to overlook the competition. I just think that's how how good he is, particularly at this this tournament. You could even argue his his grass court dominance has come close to his hardcore dominance in, in the later part of his career. I think that would be another great final. Um, I could also see it very much being Mer- Berrettini, but yeah, I'm just going for a repeat of the Australian Open final, which did disappoint a little bit. Um, but I think we'd get a slightly better match here. So just on that, we both picked Djokovic for the title. It would mean a historic 20th Grand Slam, the level Rafael Nadal and Roger Federer, and also a third slam in a row this year to keep the hopes of the the golden calendar slam alive just what, what were your thoughts on what that achievement could mean and so obviously we both picked them so we're not expecting the pressure to be a factor really no the pressure is really a factor with Djokovic he, he thrives on this kind of thing I think the mental toughness really sets him apart um from I mean even on on Federer and Nadal both obviously very mentally strong players to have hit 20 Grand Slam titles, but I think that's one of the, the edges that Djokovic definitely has on him. Um, the way when he's, you know, in a crowd that's against him, uh, he's, he's often got crowds against him, and he seems to be able to use that as an extra motivating factor so well um, when he's being booed. Um, you know, it, it, it's I don't see pressure being a problem for Djokovic. I see it as something that he'll always just take in his stride. And then, uh, you know, evening up the Grand Slam race on for possibly a calendar year Grand Slam, possibly a calendar year Golden Slam. I think if he gets if he gets something like that, then, uh, you know, people's perceptions of the most popular, the greatest tennis players of all time may, may be changed a fair bit. Um, so, yeah, I, it, it would be historic for Djokovic and part of what could be historic year yeah totally agree could be could be huge and another huge step on on the road to that so um we move into the women's draw and our, and our predictions for that Go, going straight into the the top quarter and what, which two players have you picked there so i mean the women's draw very difficult for me here but um i've gone with barty as a ranker in the first quarter Ash Barty, I think her strongest result at Wimbledon in the past is the fourth round. But uh, you know she's she's got plenty of tools. She can she can hit the ball with good power, but then she can also mix it up with with nice slice, nice drop. I think it's a game that is 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 very suited to grass. Um, a possible Joe Con a third round. Con Joe's put together good results on the grass before. 
um, in front of a home crowd, home crowd on the side, but I'd still see Barty possibly coming through that. Coco van der Wey could be a bit of a factor in this section, but I don't see her causing too much of an issue. And uh, I think a possible fourth round maybe against Kiki Burton's. I mean, Barbara Krejcikova is also in this section on the back of Roland Garros. She's once again, an unproven quantity in singles on grass. She has won the doubles at Wimbledon, but, um, you know, we know the role in Garros Wimbledon doubles very difficult to do, although we've both predicted Djokovic to do it. But I'd say Kretsch- um, you know, she, she's got plenty of potential, but I'm not ready to massively back her at Wimbledon yet. She could easily prove me wrong. So I've got Barty and Burton's in the fourth round of that section and, and Barty to come through that match with Kiki Burton's. And then in section two, um, so some a really tough section to call, actually. Uh, you've got Bianca Andreescu. Uh, you've got questions about her fitness. She's relatively unproven at Wimbledon. I think she may have only competed in the main draw at Wimbledon once. Um, Elise Cornet, she's uh, been quite far in Wimbledon in the past, but then she hasn't made it past the first round since 2016, um, when she made the third round, I believe. So... Um, Difficult to really predict a strong run for her. Daria Kasatkina, she's had a str- struggles this year, but she's uh, she's always been strong on the grass courts. Hannah, uh, Anna Kontovic, um Wimbledon finalist, she's having an all right season. So some really tough players to call here, but I've got Azarenka just coming through that, that section. Yeah, yeah, I'm with you on this one. I've, I've got Bai against Azarenka for the, the core final, I think. Yeah, Barty, the only question I'd have is just the, the fitness. Obviously, hasn't played on grass and hasn't played since that um, slight hip issue, which caused her to re- retire in the French Open second round. But uh, I'm going to assume she's she's OK and absolutely agree with you. I think she's got a great game for all services and probably especially grass, I'd say. I think yeah, you're looking at Suarez Navarro in the first round, who's obviously come back from uh, cancer, which is a fantastic story. But um, I think by win that, and then yeah, it could could well be Joe Connor in the third round, who who's just won a title on the grass. Uh, I'll probably go Krajicova in in the fourth round. Um, I think she's got a good game for grass. So the other possibility I would say would be Anastasia Sevastova, who's who's a, a dangerous player, got a good game for all services. But I think Barty comes through there, um, probably against Krajicova, and then Azarenka, yeah, Kozlova, Serena Kostea. I don't I could see her come through that. Fairly well. Um, Conovate probably in the third round. He's he's just reached the final of Eastbourne. Um, clearly clearly good on grass. But I would go with Azarenga. I mean, he's made a couple of semis at Wimbledon. Azarenga, and as you mentioned with Andreescu, just a bit of an unknown quantity. Um, fitness wise, form wise, it's been a bit uh, up and down for this year and in a comeback. And obviously, just really limited experience on grass. So I'll, I'll probably pick uh, either Ostapenko, who's won the Eastbourne title, maybe even Kazakina. To reach the fourth round, out. I'm probably going to say Kazakina to get there. He's he's made the Wimbledon quarters before, and I would go with with Azarenka as well. So in, in the second quarter, who have you got for that one? I've got um, an Alina Spitalina versus Serena Williams quarterfinal. Quite quite a tasty one, I reckon. Um, my thinking here, I mean, looking at that section three, it, it 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 stands out to me as a section with a lot of good players, but not anyone that really stands out to you as a title contender here. You've got Carolina Mushiva. She's uh, been at the quarterfinal of Wimbledon last time out. You've got Camila Giorgi. She's made the quarterfinal of Wimbledon back in 2018. She looked quite strong in Eastbourne until the semi-final, when I believe she may have retired with, with a slight injury. Um, but then, once again, Camila Giorgi, she, she's tends to have really inconsistent form, so it, it's always difficult to call how mm. she'll perform. You've got Pavel Chenkova um, coming off the back of the Roland Garros final. Uh, she's been at the court final of Wimbledon in the past in 2016. However, since 2016, she's had three first round exits. So a lot a lot of players who you say, you know, they're, they're good players, they could go quite far, but no one who had really back as a winner. And I think out of them, I'd probably say Alina Svitolina edges that section. Um, and then looking at Serena Williams, um, really interesting section because obviously you've got young Coco Goff in there, you've got Angelique Kerber who's been a strong performer on grass courts in the past. Um, 
you've got Saribes Tomo, quite a strong performer on grass courts in the past. Um, Belinda Bencic in there. Um, but I have got Serena Williams to come through and Angelique Kerr the third round to set up a fourth round with uh, young Coco Goff, who's had quite a good year so far. But I think at Wimbledon, uh, you know, with Serena Williams' as history, the fact that uh, once again, like like Andy Murray, I feel like this is where she'll want to peak um, uh, and will be training to, towards peaking at Wimbledon. I think I've got Serena Williams to come through that fourth round with Coco Goff. Yep, I'm in agreement with you on this score as well. I've also got Alina Svitolina against Serena Williams. And yeah, Svitolina's section, a tough one to call. I mean, Anna Samova, potentially second round, I would, I would pick, but um, not being in, in great form. So I think she'll come through it. Putin, Seva, or Bedoza in the third round, both uh, both good players. I would say probably not, not at the best on grass. Obviously, Svitolina has made the semis at Wimbledon. And uh, fourth round, I would, I would pick Karolina Mugova. A uh, good game for grass. Obviously, made the quarters last time out in, in 2019. Uh, Svitolina with a, a 2 0 head to head there, including 2019 Wimbledon when, when Svitolina beat her in that quarter final. So, yeah, I think Svitolina to come through there. And Serena's path, I don't think it's. It's not an easy draw, but I think first two rounds, Sasnovich and most likely Bernardo Pera, I can't see any problems there. Then Kerber in the third round could definitely be an interesting one with, with Kerber finding form with the, with the title in, in Hamburg coming in. Uh, obviously, former Wimbledon champion, but um, I'd, I'd still just go with Serena there for 6 3 with the head to head overall. Um, and yeah, in the fourth round, I'd I'd maybe just go with Belinda Bencic. Obviously, that's a tough call between, between her and Coco Golf, who's been in. Great form, but Benchich reaching the final. I think she's got a really good game for Grass, uh, very flat hitter. Uh, maybe just just give her the edge to come through the fourth round, but um, go with Serena, who again has got the, the three one head to head on on Benchich. But I think that'll be a good room, a good run for Benchich. So, yeah, Serena against Svitolina. Um And as we go on to the the bottom half, we've got the third quarter. Which which two have you gone with there? I mean, for this uh, for this quarter, I think. Um... Well, in section five, I think Carolina Pliskova, Petra Kvitova, I think that just jumped out as me as the fourth round, both the high seeds in that section. And I can't see much else in the section. I, Alison Risk, she's had decent results at Wimbledon in the past, but I just, I see it between the, being between those two for the fourth round and I've picked Petra Kvitova, who I think may narrowly lead the head-to-head between those two. Um, to come through um, the fourth round into the quarter final, and I've got mm-hmm. her to face uh, Gabby Magarufa in 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 the quarter final. I think I've got my sections mixed up, to be honest, haven't I? Uh, yeah, Magarufa's Magarufa's the bo- uh, the next section down. Yeah. Yeah. So I think what I've got, I'm gonna have to double check this. Uh, oh yeah, I've got her to meet uh, Madison Keys in the. Yeah, that's the right one quarterfinal um because looking at that section a, a, a weird section a lot of british players in there and a lot of uh, american players in there um mm. almost a british versus america section um I, I, once again a, a, a difficult section to call sophia kenning uh you're looking at her results um she's uh been a really strong player for the last two two years now um reaching finals of, of slams, winning the Australian Open back in 2020. But I just don't have the confidence in her with the previous results at Wimbledon yet. Uh, Kuda Matova, um, one of the seeds in this section. Um, I think she's got a chance of reaching reaching the fourth round. Um, you've got Herkog, um, Elise Mertens. But I just uh, think Madison Key, Madison Keys has uh, maybe the best best pedigree on grass out of this section. Um, she's not the highest seed of this section. She's the third highest seed of this section. But I think she's got a bit of pedigree on the grass courts, and I have her uh, uh, coming through that fourth round. Yeah, and maybe maybe surprisingly again with this one. Um, can, but yeah, I've got the same two as you again. I've got Pera Kvitova and also Madison Keys. Um, so yeah, with with Kvitova's section, I mean potentially a tough one in the first round in Sloan Stevens, but um, obviously a former U.S. Open winner. But I just think on grass, I'll I'll definitely go with Kvitova, the two-time Wimbledon champion. 
think probably would be Heather Watson in the second round. He's, he's definitely a good grass court player. He's, he's, he's had some results at Wimbledon in the past. Obviously pushed Serena Williams, I think, in 2015. which narrowly lost in the third set. But, yeah, I think Kvyeva comes through that. Probably Pagula, third round. He's had a great year. And, yeah, I'd, I'd agree with you. I think it would be Pliskova in the fourth round. But um, I would, I would go with Kvyeva. Does I think I've got 3-1 head-to-head here again. For Kvitova against Pliskova, I mean, I'm just never convinced by Pliskova at the slams, and I, I just can't really go with her to go any further than the fourth round with with a recent record. I'd say even maybe watch out for her against Risk or Vegic in the first couple of rounds, who are dangerous on grass. But yeah, Kvitova there, and the Madison Keys, yeah, I mean, two titles on grass, um, Wimbledon quarter finalist. I think she comes through Case One, Lauren Davis, and possibly. Elite, Elise Mertens in the third round. Um, he's a very consistent player. Generally see again the fourth rounds, third um, quarters of a major, but he's 2-0 and in the head-to-head there. I think she'd win that. And I'd probably just go with, with Kennan, maybe come through the, to the fourth round. I think Daniel Collins and, as you mentioned, Kudamadova both uh, could be dangerous there. But yeah, Keyes again leads the head-to-head against Collins 2-1 against Kennan rather to one and uh, yeah I just think I'd back keys Kennan not really been in the greatest form so um going on to the bottom section which which two have, have you gone for there well I've given it away I've got Gabby McGrew has come through section seven um I mean here we've got um Iga Spiantek. um I, I, I'm backing Iga to do well on the grass court so I, I think she's got a game that's going to translate across across all surfaces in time I think she's got a really awful first round draw against uh, Su Wei Shea. Uh, the, the variety that uh, Shea can throw into the game, uh, you know, on grass courts where you've got, got low bounces, those drop shots that she likes to throw in will, will be a bit of a weapon if she's getting them in. So, um, Eager's going to have to look out for that. Um, so, but I still, I still have her managing to get through that. Um, but then she's got other difficult players around her in the draw. She's got Petra Martic, who um, I, I believe has has done quite well at, at Wimbledon in in the past, reaching the fourth round twice. So I'd say I'd say maybe Martic might be the end of Sviatek's run, um, and then possibly a Martic versus Muguru for fourth round. I mean that's not. Very easy to call. Mugaruf has got Ons Jabbar in her half of, of Section 7, who's uh, got a grass court title to her name this year. Mugaruf are off that great start to 2021. She's maybe dropped off a little bit, but she was my pre season pick for the title. I do feel like we're going to see a strong Wimbledon from her, and I do think she, she'll get through Jabbar in the third round. Matic in the fourth round and set up a quarter final against. I've gone with um, Sabalenka. Um, I've gone with Sabalenka versus Maria Sakari, fourth round from section eight, which is with the seeds, I believe. Um, you've got other players in there Christina Mladenovic, um, you've got Ribikina. Um, they're very good players in, in this section. Um, but I, I, I see Sakari with, with, I think, so some good, very good results in 2021. Um, she's not got the greatest pedigree on grass, but um, I, I do think she comes through her half of Section 8 in, into a match against Sabalenka. I think Sabalenka is easy to predict from her, her half of Section 8. Um, mm-hmm. A lot of qualifiers in that side of the draw. You've got wildcard Katie Bolter, so um, it, it's not the strongest. Um, so I'd say from that half of Section 8, Sabalenka comes through and, and comes through that fourth round with Maria Sakari. Yeah, well, we've got a full house here because I've also got Gabby and Magrutha against Arena Sabalenka, so we've, we've got the same eight core finalists in the women's draw. Um, and yeah, with Magrutha, I mean, I think I think injuries have been a lot of the problem, which derailed her after the the fantastic start of the season. Um, but I think maybe now coming back to fitness, getting back on track a bit, she had a, a quarter final result in Berlin. And obviously, we know what she can do on the grass, win, winning the title here before. Um, and yeah, like you say, not not an easy draw. But I think Fiona Ferro, Svetlana Kuznetsova, a, a former major winner, I think 
Muguruza on grass, uh, I think will come through there. Jabir in the third round. Triggy obviously just won a title on grass, but I think, yeah, I couldn't look past Muguruza. And yes, Sviatbek in the fourth round, obviously, is, like you said, I think she will figure it out on grass. She's too good a, a player not to, but she definitely, for me, is a, um, a clay court player where you, you'd say that's probably at this stage by far a best service and grass is probably a worst. It'll take her a bit of a bit more time for me to really get to the level of being a contender for the title. So I think, yeah, Sviatek or Martic probably in, in the fourth round. I would say Sviatek, Mugruthas uh, won their only previous meeting and definitely on grass, so I would go with her there. So and Sabalenka, I mean, yeah, still hasn't made a Grand Slam quarterfinal, but I mean, surely, surely it's a matter of time. We seem to keep saying it, but um, yeah, it's, I think grass is actually a good service for her. I mean, she's, I think, 10 and 10 in a, in a career, which maybe isn't great, but I think she's a much improved player now, um, probably from when quite a few of those losses came. I uh, made a quarterfinal in Eastbourne uh, last week and also this week rather, and also uh, made the final a couple of years ago. So I, I think Sabalenka has got a good game for grass, very aggressive, big serve, flat hitter. And I don't think it's a bad draw at all. Uh, I think surely this is a great opportunity for her to, to at least make a quarter final. She's the second seed. I think Nicolescu, Colin Skaya, probably in the second round, Alexandrova. I can't see any, any problems there if she plays anywhere near her best. And yeah, Sakari or Rubikina in the, in the fourth round, I would, I would say. I um, agree with you. I mean, you know how much I'm, I'm a fan of Sakari's game. We've talked about it on, on here, but I think, like you mentioned, Grass probably not a, a best service. I think she could still have success, but uh, I would back uh, Sablenga, who also has a 4 1 head to head in that matchup. Possibly Rubikina, who got a really good result in Eastbourne making the semi final. But again, Sablenga 2 0 against Rubikina, who I'll maybe just give the edge to get the fourth round. But um to go with Sabalenka so on one of the core final outcomes on the women's side uh who have you got coming through those matchups which we've all got exactly the same I think this is where we'll start to be, see a bit of variety because um I mean we're, we're both big fans of Ash Barty and we've both predicted her to do quite well in throughout this year um it, I think I had her for Roland Garros I think you may have had her for the Australian Open but I do think she may fall at the quarterfinals to Victoria Azarenka. Um, Azarenka actually is behind in the head-to-head against Barty. But, um, I mean, it's such a poor science to go on. But I'm just seeing Ash Barty for this run at Wimbledon fourth round. I know she's a different player since then. Uh, Azarenka best run at Wimbledon semi final. So I'm just going to say that extra expertise on grass that Azarenka has shown in the past may... may be a factor here and as a ranker will come through that match uh, between Alina Svitolina and Serena Williams um, a difficult one to call but I'm going to have uh, Serena Williams to beat Svitolina um, once again as I've, I'll, I'll reiterate I, I do feel like we're going to see as close to Serena at as best as we will see at all uh, this year uh, at Wimbledon so I think Serena towards towards what we know as her best tennis um, is a big favourite to come through a match against Vitalina. Um Between Kvitova um, and Madison Keys, they've, they've got quite a close head-to-head, I believe. I think um, it may be 5-4 um, to Kvitova. Um, and I'm going to have Kvitova to come through that match with Madison Keys. Um I think strong results at Wimbledon in the past um, and I think maybe a better season so far as well is is my thinking on that one. Um, and then between Magarufa and Sabalenka, I think this is largely just due to my pre-season pick um, and want it, wanting it to uh, at least be close to being right. I've got uh, Gabby Magarufa to come through that match. Yeah. So yeah, we do have uh, a little bit of difference this time, and it's it's in the first one. I've gone for Bai to beat Azarenka, as as you mentioned. It's got a, a narrow lead in, in the head to head, and I, I would just give her the edge there. Um, if healthy, um, I, I really do like a game on, on grass, but yeah, for sure I could would give Azarenka a, a chance. Um, and I think Serena, I'd be pretty confident to beat Svelina. I mean, I think Svelina does seem to hit a point where she she comes up against the very best in a quarterfinal or a semi of a slam, which she can't get outclassed. And I think five one head to head there. Can't, couldn't bet against Serena at Wimbledon, um, and as we'll come on, I think this is probably her best chance to win a to win number twenty four. Um, I would have Kvitova to beat 
keys as, as well, as you mentioned, an interest in head to head there. Um, they've played seven times just in keys' favor, but I would go with the two time champion. And I'd also have Magrutha against Sablenka, a tough one to call, but um, just the, the Greg grass court and Wimbledon pedigree and Grand Slam pedigree. I think that would be fantastic just for Sablinger to finally get through that quarter final. But um we'll go with Magruther just just leads the head to head two one um to come to the semi. So on, on other semis who who've you got winning those? So Victoria has a rank around Serena Williams is actually a very common battle on the WTA tour, it turns out. Uh twenty three times I've met Serena uh leading the head to head eighteen five. But Azarenka did win the last meet in between the two, so I don't know. I've got I've got a positive feeling about Victoria as Azarenka in this tournament, and I might I might decide to pick her to beat Serena Williams. You know, just uh, ju- just for variety more than anything, and and not to always go with the head to head to head with my predictions. So I'm gonna have Victoria Azarenka to come through that match against Serena Williams. I think it would be a great match, uh, possibly match of the tournament if it turns out. I'd, I'd see it being going down to all three sets, um, and maybe a, a narrow, a narrow win. Whoever takes it, um, and then between uh, Kvitova and Muguruza, Kvitova leads that head to head, and she's also she beat Magruva in their most recent meeting as well. So leading the head to head, having won the most recent meeting, um, which I believe was the final. Uh, do, do you know this? I think it was a final this year, but um, Petra yeah, a bit of a beat. I think it was. I can't remember which which one it was though. No, yeah. Um, so so with it being a recent meeting as well, fresh in my mind, um, it, it's a good good knowledge base to to go off for this match, and I think that is gonna uh, gonna dictate my prediction here for it to be uh, Victoria Azarenka versus Petra Kvitova final at Wimbledon. Yeah, that's that's definitely an interesting one too. We've got a, a little bit of variety as well. I've I've got um, Serena Williams to beat to beat Ash Barty yeah, again, uh, not just for the head to head, which is which is two and zero. Just um, yeah, Serena's record at Wimbledon, I think. I do think she's going to get through to the final, and as we'll, we'll come on to the outcome of that in a moment. But um, I, th- I think it's a great opportunity for her. I, th- I think we saw really positive signs of Roland Garros actually getting to the fourth round after barely, um, well, after no preparation uh, besides having one or two tournaments where she only got a match under her belt. So uh, yeah, I think I think at Wimbledon back on the grass. I think a bit like we talked about with Djokovic and also with with Federer. If if we see him at his best, I think. These players who have so much more experience uh, on this unique service are great at the game. I, I, I do think if they find the best, they'll be very difficult to stop. So I'm going with Serena to beat Bayi, and I think what would, would be a great semi-final. Uh, and then I've also got Kvitova to beat Muguruza. I mean, yeah, the head-to-head is is a bit of a factor there with it being five-one, as you mentioned the recent meeting. Um, but I mean, both fantastic grass court players, former Wimbledon champions, a really tough one to call that as well. But I think Kvitova. A record of Wimbledon in the last few years actually hasn't been as impressive. I almost feel like she's due a great run here, um, and I think we'll we'll see it from her. So on on the final, which you've got between Azarenka and Kaveva, who have you got winning that one? Um, so I found this one quite difficult to call because um, they haven't played each other since 2019, I believe. The head-to-head isn't massively conclusive either way. Kaveva leads that five-three. Um, so I'm thinking I'm going to predict Victoria Azarenka to, to win Wimbledon this time round. Um, it would definitely be an extremely interesting match between a former a former semi-finalist and, and a former champion. Um, but I'm, I think I'd, I'd like to see a new, a new title winner, a new name on the trophy. And it often has been the case with the WTA, where the, the, the women's side, where we've predicted a winner that's won won tournaments quite recently, and it turns out that it's just a completely different name that gets the hands on the title. Um, you know, it happened to us both again at Roland Garros this year. So I think factoring that into the equation, uh, my prediction is to put a new name on the trophy, and that's Victoria Azarenka's name. Yeah, I think that's definitely definitely an interesting point you make, and it probably would have been a smart um, 
path to fall, but I haven't gone with that. Um, I, just, <laughs> I feel like Wimbledon still, it, it's probably the one where that's least likely to happen. Could could easily be, be proven wrong. Um, but yeah, I'm, I'm going to go with Serena Williams to beat Perry Kvitova in the final. Um, you know, a 5 2 head to head there and 2 0 at Wimbledon. Obviously, those were quite a long time ago, but I think that they probably have some relevance now. I am going to go with, with Serena, win the 24th slam to tie Margaret Court. And I would go as, as far as say it is a last big chance to win it. For that reason, I'm, I'm going to I'm going to pick it to do. I think it's a, I think it is a bit of a golden opportunity, really, with them, um, as, as, particularly with Osaka and Halep not being there, who've been, uh, who've been real problems for Serena in some of her recent slams uh, in the finals and Osaka also in the semis at, the Australian Open this year who've denied her when she's been chasing history so I think with two real big contenders out of the way the defending champion and Osaka who's been the dominant player at Grand Slams for the last couple of years I think opens it up a little bit and Kvitova would definitely be a big hurdle in the final as you know in a battle between multiple uh, form, time former champions but I'm just going to pick uh, Serena Williams to do it and uh, to, to make history um, as we have with, with Novak Djokovic so that pretty much brings us to the end. Uh, uh, just, just quickly, again, your thoughts on that. Do you would you agree this is Serena's last big chance to win a slam? I'd say so. I, I don't think she's too outside a chance of a US Open as well. On, I mean, they're not the fastest of hard courts, but uh, they're, they're certainly not a slow court either. In front of a home crowd that would be massively backing her, I think Wimbledon's her best chance for US Open this year. Is an outside chance um, that I think if she doesn't get either of those, I don't really see her getting number 24, which would be a massive shame. And I'd, for that reason, I, I do want to see see Serena get get number 24. And for that reason, I'd really love your prediction to be be, be the best prediction here. Yeah, I'd, I'd, I would do. <laughs> but, but no, as as Arenka would be would be a great. It would be a great story as well to win a major so long after a, a previous one. So that does bring us to the end. We do have a bit of a right in, in the end on the women's side, but I think possibly no surprise we've both got Djokovic um, on the men's. So it's it's been a pleasure previewing and predicting the men's and women's singles draws at Wimbledon. Hope everyone enjoys the, the tournament. It's been a it's been a long way for it, but hopefully it'll be a well worth the wait. And we will be back after the tournament to review it. Um, Possibly, possibly during it for something like a midweek or something during the second week, if if we get the chance. So thanks everyone very much for watching. Let us know your thoughts on the video in in the comments below. Um, let us know your own predictions if you, if you have any, and um, we're available to listen uh, now. The Dunity Tennis Podcast on several audio and podcast platforms, and you can find us at at Dunity Tennis Podcast on Twitter. We'll see you next time.